Uh, if we could have a roll call, please, starting with Dr. Chapman. <clears throat> Jay Chapmas. Peter Howe. Len Galino, Chair. John Thibodeau. Um, we have a quorum, and we have first issue of business is to approve the minutes of April 28, 2009, when we had one applicant that appeared before us. Um, any comments on the proposed minutes from that meeting? Move approval. I have a comment, please, from the minutes. Page 2, line 32, the word vice, I believe, reads more correctly, versus. And, yep. and to further clarify that statement, the, the subject of that discussion was regarding uh, replying to the email notification to the board members. <clears throat> and I requested that all board members uh, do reply to the sender only, the secretary, uh, but that all board members do reply their attendance uh, uh, situation, whether they would or would not be attending the meeting. So if you would kindly insert that just for clarification before line 31 that that sentence was in reference to a request that all board members re reply to the secretary, regarding the secretary, their attendance status. That's how the discussion was. Yep. Just for clarification. That's the only comments I have. Any other comments? I, I, I would like to state I think the, the, the minutes were very well done and were very comprehensive and were very clear. And I would like to thank the recording secretary for that. Having no, we have a motion. Okay, the second. second. All in favor of passing the minutes? Unanimously voted in favor of passing the minutes of April 28th. The next item of business for today is some new business, and it's to hear the request of Jay Stackhouse, 14 Phillip Road, tax map U22, lot 20, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically a massage therapy business. Uh, is the applicant here? Could you approach the podium and identify yourself, your name, address, uh, and present your application, please? Yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is Jay Stockhouse. Um, I live at 14 Phillip Road. And I have lived there since April of 2007. Um, I'd like to uh, further expound on my background, if I may. Sure, please do. Um, I'm originally a chiropractor, practiced in the greater Portland area. Um, I have lived in Cape Elizabeth since 1994 um, in other locations. Um, I practiced for 25 years in the Portland, South Portland area. Uh, I sold my practice in 1999 and retired at that time um, and have since uh, gone back to school for massage therapy because I missed clinical work, mm -hmm. but I wanted something part-time and something I didn't have to deal with insurance and <laughs> all of the other hassles of the medical world. Um, I have three children. My 15-year-old is an honor student in Cape Elizabeth. She's just finishing her freshman year. And then I have two older boys in their 30s, uh, one in Florida and one here in Cape Elizabeth on his own. <clears throat> um, I'm a single father. Uh, my daughter lives with me part-time. She lives with her mother part-time, and her mother also lives in Cape Elizabeth. Um, so we have deep ties here. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated from Spa Tech Institute in Massage Therapy two weeks ago um, and have applied for my license to the state. I should have them within another couple of weeks uh, with goals of practicing uh, massage therapy starting the first part of June or sometime. Um, I'm here to request that I'm able to practice a part-time basis um, 
but I wanted to uh, go through uh, the zone, the zoning and home business requirements and respond to that because it's rather self-limiting. If uh, somebody would like to have copies of that, I, I brought some extra copies. Um, Could we have a copy of what you just passed out? Just you one sure copy, can. One copy, and we'll pass it around. We'd like to just see what you passed out. Thank you. Thank you. The secretary needs a copy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, I thought I would just go through uh, the seven criterial points that are here um, so that my neighbors will know what I'm doing. I've got around to a few of the neighbors, um, and I apologize for those that I did not get to. Um, uh, the first criteria is uh, not more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling uh, unit shall not it should not be involved or employed on the premises in the business or professional use. Uh, I want a part-time practice. I don't need a secretary, so I won't have any employees. It'll just be myself. Um, and then number two, the nature of the business or professional use shall not exceed uh, uh, vehicular traffic on the street by more than 2% of the current average annual daily traffic or two uh, trips or 10 trips a day, whichever is larger. And I'll probably fall into the 10 trips a day, um, which will be self-limiting to five clients a day, which is actually more than, more than the physical uh, uh, part that I want to expand. <laughs> um, it's a lot of work. Five is a lot of work. Yeah. If I do two to three and maybe, I don't know if I crank out four or not, but I'm not really interested in doing that. I'll limit it to an hour to an hour and a half, um, half hour between uh, clients. I'll have one at a time since I'm not good at more than that. Um, so I have plenty of parking in my driveway, so I'll always be off street. Um, I have a two-car garage, so I can keep my car in the garage. I only have one car anyway. Um, and my other thing was I was going to work three to four days a week, Monday through Friday. I don't like weekends. I didn't work that hard as a chiropractor, and I certainly am not going to work that hard as a massage therapist at 60 years old. What are your proposed hours? Uh, between 8 in the morning and 6 in the evening, no later than that. Probably more like 9 to 4. <laughs> I'm sorry, between 8 and 1, and then? Eight, 8 to 6 is broadline. I'll probably do, I was thinking more like 8.30 to 9.30, one appointment, and then from 10 to like 11, and then from 11.30 to 12.30, that type of a thing. If I wanted an hour and a half, I'd just come on around and still have a half hour between uh, clients. So are you going to eliminate it to just daytime? Oh, yes. <laughs> and what time would be your last client? I would like to finish by 6. So you're looking for authority for to see clients anytime between 8 and 6? That'd be great. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then number 3, the business professional use shall not uh, produce odors, fumes, dust, glare, noise. Uh, uh, so everything's inside, so I won't, shouldn't, fall, shouldn't have any problem with those. Uh, any external alteration of the building on the site, including the provision of parking in the ordinance of 1978, off-street parking should not detract from the residential character. Again, we should be off -street, will be off-street parking. I'll make sure of that. Um, the square footage occupied by the business and professional use will be less than 20% 20, uh, 20 
I have a small office downstairs on the first floor. I have a bathroom down there, and I have a family room that I hope not to use, but if two clients get there and one's going and one's leaving, then they may have to sit there, but <laughs> that's not the plan. That's why the half hour between sessions. Yep. Um, and then the signage. Um, if I were to have a sign, it would definitely be a professional looking sign, something like two by six inches high. At this point, I'm not requesting a sign because I don't want uh, uh, unappointed people stopping by my home. Uh, so I really don't want a sign at this point. That's just for your information, that helps a little bit if you're not requesting a sign because usually that's one of the neighborhood oppositions is most folks don't want it to look like a, a commercial area. Right. So if, um, so it, it sounds like you're comfortable, your application is explicit in, its, in the sense that it's specifically not requesting authority to put up a sign. Yes. Okay. Um, and I was also, I, you lay in bed, you think about this stuff, and I was thinking, now if some guy next door to me was doing the same thing that I'm doing, what else would I be concerned about? Uh, and I talked to Mr. Smith about it. Um, if I were to sell this practice and the home, um, I would think that this would be null and void, and someone would have to come back before this board and reapply. Is that true? I'll defer to Bruce on that. Well, I, I gave that little thought. And, and uh, if somebody was to come in and operate exactly the same way, the same hours, uh, on your application, I think they could probably do that, although I never had that question answered. But they asked. Uh, but you can certainly ask the board to, for approval for you and nobody else. If that I will take care of it. I would would request the board to do that. Yeah. Because um, I have no intentions of creating a business to sell. Yeah. Um, I strictly want a part time practice to keep me out of trouble off the street and um, something to do for the next three or four or five years until my daughter's graduated. <clears throat> um, number seven, there shall be no out door storage or equipment or materials. Um, I don't need any outdoor, outdoor storage. I have, I have way too much room in my house now to put junk. So <laughs> um, I'd be glad to entertain any questions uh, or concerns for anybody, from anyone. Does the school bus come down your street? Yes, it does. And uh, where does it stop? Uh, I believe it stops in front of well, he's still, I'm still speaking to him. Okay. We'll get to you. We'll get to people supporting in opposition to the, unless he, is he part of the applicant? Is nope. With you? No, no. Yeah, we'll get you in a second, sir. Um, you have this map as part of the application. Where does the school bus come? It comes right, right down. It Phillip comes Road. right down Philip and stops wherever there are children to be picked up because it appears to that, that they let them out right in front of their home. Mm -hmm. um, maybe one of the younger fathers could address that. <laughs> Is it a two-way street or a one-way street? Two-way. Two-way. Yeah. Questions? <clears throat> just, just, uh, I guess I'm looking for a clarification on the, the sign. The application does seem to, when asked if it will be a sign, you do say yes, and that it will not exceed four square feet. Are you amending the application? Is that essentially your intention to say no sign at this point? Yes. After filling out that application, I spoke to several of my instructors at Spot Tech who have home offices, and their recommendation was if you do not need a sign, we would you don't recommend need that you walk not. business, right? Exactly. You know, I, I don't want to be open for business around the clock. So it will be by appointment only, and uh, so I would be glad to to amend that with no sign. So Bruce, question for you, I guess, how do we, how does he go about amending this? Is, just, is it just a part of the minutes? Yeah. 
Okay. Sure thing. Uh, the application also speaks uh, to, um, looks like this is under item four, uh, additional, I think it's plants and shrubs. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that right now. Okay. I've rode a toe and I've got some new plants on their way. <laughs> Just, I'm, I'm kind of eyeballing your, uh, the, the picture uh, from the Google map. Where, where I, I don't know if you can... If they're even the, the plants in the front of the house are no longer there because they were in terrible shape, so they will re be replaced uh, by new plants. Those are all gone, by the way. Okay, so, the, so these are landscaping plants just in front of the house? Yes. A, okay. Immediately in front of the house, yes. Okay. I do have a, a, a letter from uh, the neighbor directly across from me. I have not read it. She gave it to me as I was walking out the door. Um, uh, she did speak to Mr. Smith, and uh, I think she's for me. I would, I would be glad to try to read it here. She was, it's, in, it's in longhand, if that's all right. Go ahead, sure. <clears throat> it says to the zoning board public hearing uh, request for Jay Stackhouse, 14 Phillip Road, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business. Um, going for a massage therapy business. After speaking with Mr. Stackhouse, Jay, this morning regarding his proposal, I feel as though my concerns were heard and addressed and would simply like to restate them uh, here for the purpose of clarity and support. My main areas of concern are increase of traffic on Phillip Road, which is already used as they cut through and vehicles use the road as such are um, not aware, careful of the children and pets, general neighborhood safety uh, aspect. Parking, Phillip Road being without um, uh, sidewalks because uh, uh, becomes hazardous and dangerous when multiple, car, multiple cars park on either side of the street, another safety uh, concern. Uh, signage, in keeping with the neighborhood, <coughs> um, residential zoning and character, characteristics and safety uh, my concern was that a sign would uh, increase traffic as well as unscheduled clients, walk-ins, uh, would not be able to control number. Uh, hours of operation in keeping with residential neighborhood safety, uh, lifestyle, my concern again was in regard to operating hours. I support eight to eight 8 to 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. normal business hours with the uh, last client leaving by 6.30. Uh, I believe that would help, this would help maintain the residential integrity, yet I am still concerned regarding the increase of vehicle, especially in uh, my daytime hours of operation when the, when the clocks fall back at 4 p.m., for example. Um, Jay will end. You enter. Oh. I wish Jay well in his new adventure, and I hope that he is successful and that he will uh, resume that uh, his clients will be noti notified that this is a residential neighborhood to be alert with uh, when driving uh, and parking in the driveway. Not only do we have young children, also pets and disabled neighbors <clears throat> who currently look out for one another. I'm not sure if it's reasonable to assume Jay's clients would be thinking of these factors. However, I do believe that Jay will 
act as a responsible business owner as he has been a good neighbor. Uh, I have faith that Jay will address these concerns and promote safety among his clients, neighbors, etc. Um, sincerely, Kimberly Carlisle, 15 Phillip Road. So 15 Phillips right across the street from you? Yes, sir. And what was the name of the resident there? Um, Chris and Kimberly Carlisle. Carlisle. Yes. Do you want to make that part of the record? That'd be fine. You want to pass it up to me? What was the address? 15 Phillip Road, which is directly across from your house. <clears throat> from yes, directly across. Yes. Any other questions for the applicant? questions if I might. How many vehicles currently reside at your property? Uh, just my one vehicle. Just one? Yes. Okay. And that full time there's just one vehicle? Yes. Okay. I have a 15 year old daughter who can't drive for another year. She may have a car. Uh, after that again I have a two car garage and two cars. She's there part time. Uh, so I may have a car in a, in a, after a after February 1st of and next year. <laughs> the, reason, the reason I ask that is that it, it is understood that all parking must be off street and provided. I understand that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you stated that there would be no addition, you would be the one and only staff member, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, just for my own education, uh, you, you're a doctor of chiropractics, correct? Yes. And, but you said you recently completed massage therapy school. Is that a separate type licensing in the state of Maine? Yes, it is. Okay, so yes. your, your, your DC degree is not encompassing to massage therapy? No, no, I, don't, I do not practice chiropractic uh, any longer, and I haven't since 1999. I'm also not licensed to practice in the state of Maine chiropractic. I'm not licensed to practice. I retired, and uh, it's expensive to maintain a license. You were licensed in Maine previously? I practiced for, 50, for 25 years. In, okay. in, in and the reason why I ask is, uh, it, and, and we all know that search records aren't current always on the, on the Internet search, but it, it does reference your... Stackhouse Chiropractic Associates on Auburn Street. Is that is that old news? Is that that's or, very old news? Okay. <clears throat> I sold that practice to uh, Dr. Robert Deutsch in, in uh, April of 1999. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if you were retired but still owner of that, and whether that, and the reason that that's applicable in my mind is is that it's, would that be a referral base for your anticipated residential practice? Um, because he's a colleague, I suppose it could possibly be. No, I'm saying is there in existence a currently a Stackhouse Chiropractic Associates? No, there is not. Okay. That, that was a corporation that's... and it has been dissolved. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you, since you haven't been practicing for 10 years, how do you anticipate obtaining new new clients, new customers, uh, since you have no, you're starting out, you haven't practiced massage therapy before, how do you anticipate getting your client base? And I ask that in reference to advertising and, and what method you will be uh, uh, using to get clients uh, for our own information. We, okay. I'd like to know that. That's a good question. Um, um, I'll be very professional about it, just like I was in, as, a, as a chiropractor. I am developing a, th a three-leaf uh, pamphlet, uh, giving my background and what, offer, what services I offer um, that I can pass out to businesses if they'll put it in. I have colleagues that I'll ask if they will uh, refer. Uh, and then basically just meeting people and, and having uh, referrals. I mean, I figured if I'm only going to see three or four people a day, three or four days a week, 
I mean, how many people do, does it take to get busy, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, the reason why I ask that is, is that we have ordinances that we follow, but it, it, there's also, I mean, we do want to be respectful that it's a residential area, and, and whether there'll be print advertisement and newspapers or it, it's, I mean, this is questions that, that could be, should be addressed to some degree, just for informational purposes. Sure. I will probably make an announcement, say, in the career that I'm open for business. Um, I may put in a business size type uh, business card ad for recognition, maybe. Um, I can't imagine doing much else than that. Uh, I don't know the, the demand for massage therapy in this area, but would you ever anticipate the customer visits, which is applicable in the ordinance to uh, restricted to 10 visits a day, 10 trips or five, is it, would you, we would expect you to always be uh, respectful of that ordinance restriction. And I don't know whether the demand is little or great. Um, I, I will say that I will not be seeing I'll probably be lucky to see five a day. Physically, I can't do it. Uh, I, I got out of chiropractic because I had a shoulder injury and was unable to do that any longer. And I, so I can't crank out five hours, one hour sessions for the same reason. Uh, but I can do three or four. Um, I think four, I've never done four. I've only done three. <laughs> so I'm not real interested in doing a whole lot per day. You requested that you would like the hours to go till six. Is that, how important is that? How important is that? Mm -hmm. um, and we ask that in view of neighborhoods and families and children and yeah. nighttime, early nighttime in the winter. Is that, is that possible to, but just how important is that to, um, to your success? I think most people, most people work till you know, I don't know. It wasn't really a concern. I just know that I don't want to work past six, <laughs> you know. And if I don't have to work past one, I'll be happy. But I would like to be able to have some afternoon hours, early evening hours up to, uh, so that I can finish by six because my daughter is at home and I'm in, in the evening's hours. Uh, so I have no... I have no reason to, to uh, practice after 6 o'clock at night. Okay. And if, if this gets to the point of approval, uh, you don't have a problem with us inserting, based on the earlier discussion, inserting the restriction <clears throat> that these office rights are not transferable. It, you said they were not absolutely, or should, may we insert that? I would say that if, if somebody else came in and wanted to do the exact same thing, that, that I, the audience is silent whether they have to come back. So I'm making the assumption that until i faced with that, that, that um, they can transfer. Somebody else could take that business over. It can transfer? Can. Yes. But they could. If he sells his property, then it can be transferred? I would say yes. I think I heard the applicant say earlier, though, that um, he's willing to, he's willing to, to waive that. To waive that. Would be Absolutely. You would, have, you would not object, then, if we, just to, just to enforce the restriction that we would like new applicants to come before us and not be assumed transfer, would, you wouldn't object to, to, if we inserted a non-transferable clause. And that's why I brought it to the attention of the board. Okay. Yes. I'd be glad to to, because if I lived next door to me, I'd want that to happen so that there'd be some control over. That was my intent. Yes, no, absolutely not a problem. I have no other questions. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I just have Go ahead, one John. or two others. Um, uh, how many uh, 
how many uh, you kind of made a few references that you thought realistically you might see two to three to four patients in a day and much beyond that it gets to be a little too physically demanding is it could you see three patients a day could uh, I um, I'm assuming that I I could okay. I don't know that physically I can but I think I could <laughs> okay, and, and and I may not have heard you correctly. Did you say uh, earlier that that you were looking to operate it Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday? Uh, probably Monday through Friday, um, I guess. Okay. And from the hours of eight to six, I think is what you were with the half hour in between. Yes. Your your visits. Yes. Great. Any other questions? Okay. Um, unless you have a, something else you want to add, we'll now take up any other folks that want to appear in support of the application. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sir? Could you identify yourself for the record, please? My name is Eric Urbanic. I live at 10 Phillip Road, Cape Elizabeth, and uh, I'm going to butter to Mr. Stackhouse. Thank you. And I just wanted to come out uh, this evening in support of uh, the applicant. Uh, he uh, contacted me earlier in the day and uh, um, gave me his business plan, his proposal, and. Uh, I've lived at this address since 2002 of August, and uh, the applicant moved in, I think it said 2007, and been perfectly neighborly, and uh, I just didn't have a problem with him, with his, uh, his proposal and how it would impact the neighborhood. Um, and I, for the record, I did want to clarify that on Phillip Road with the school bus issue, mm -hmm. uh, we do have school buses, but the because the street, because Phillip Road, its proximity to Pond Cove, um, we have pickup for kindergarten students only. After first grade and on, the, there's no school bus stops on our street. So currently the bus does a loop on Phillip Road, but I don't think it actually picks up any students. My daughter was a kindergartner last year. She's now in first grade, so she's walking to school. And my other daughter is will be in kindergarten two years down the road, but, and I think we have one, one or two other small children in the neighborhood, but that's, that's the total stops. I don't think there's currently any stops this year. Okay. So, just to clarify the school bus. That's helpful, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and that's all I have to say. Great, thank you for your okay. support. Thanks. Anyone else want to appear in support of the application? Okay, anyone here to appear in opposition to the application? Please take the podium. If you could identify your, your, your name and your address, please. Yes, uh, Dwayne Wakefield, 15 Dearborn Drive. I'm, I thought I was coming in opposition, and I just need a couple of clarification, and that opposition may go away. I, I want to know about the... Uh, the application, are all the details in the application uh, specific in that become part of what he's re uh, required to, to um, Comply. follow? Like if, it's, if he's applying from Monday through Friday, if he wanted to do a Saturday morning office hour, he'd have to come back to the board for um, That's correct. change it. That's correct. And I'd also like to know the process of, this, of the Board of Appeals relative to if we, if this business uh, is approved, uh, does this uh, open the door to make it any easier for another business on Phillip Road or anyone abutting this area or in the neighborhood to come up and say, "Well, we've already got one business now. Could I, could another business start? And could another? Is this, is, is this the kind of the crack in the dike?" Well, I think the crack in the dike or the uh, cow's already out of the barn on the issue in the sense that. The ordinance that was passed specifically allows for home businesses, and that ordinance was passed some time ago. Uh, and we, this board has already approved, both during my tenure and before I got here, 
uh, numerous home businesses, um, both massage businesses and other types of businesses. Um, so it's really, uh, like I say, it's uh, the cow's already out of the barn on, the, on that particular issue. So I don't think this particular granting or denying this application is going to change the fact that uh, the prop, uh, proper applicant can get approval here. Okay. I'd like to add to that response. Sure. Absolutely not. The approval of one would have no bearing on any other application on that street or in the area. We look at each one individually and in detail. And if it meets the ordinance, then we apply the ordinance and, and the standards of the ordinance. So absolutely not. This would not pave the way for anything different or unique. Well, thank you, then. I, You're I, welcome. I, don't have no, I have no opposition. OK, great. Thank you. Does anyone else want to appear in opposition to the application? Does anyone else want to get up and support, oppose, or tell us a story? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sorry? <laughs> Talk to Bruce. Talk to the town manager. That is an issue. It is. I wish we could restrict it to parking on one side of the road. Uh, because that's really tough when you get two sides. So when we had, yesterday was tough getting down that road because all of the traffic was rerouted down yeah. Phillip and they were parking on both sides of the road and it was, was it not? It was a real hassle. That's a town manager issue, Bruce. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe signs on one side or the other, we don't care which side. Talk to the town manager. Okay. Um, I thank, I, I thank the board and I thank my neighbors for coming and getting clarification. And I do apologize for not touching base with some of you before I came. Um, I feel like I have, um, I've got, with what we've done here, I feel like I've got all I need. Um, well, you don't have everything you need yet. You need I need approval. <laughs> but if that approval happens, I'll be happy. And I, I'm hoping that you, you folks will be as happy as I. Um, and I was surprised I had to do this because I thought the guidelines were pretty clear. But um, uh, again, I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm going to close the um, open portion of the discussion or the presentation at this point, unless somebody else has something else they want to add. We'll close that and just open it for discussion among the panel. Um, any comments about this particular application? Not from me. <clears throat> it appears to me that the, all the standards uh, of the ordinance have been met by the applicant. Uh, he has agreed to my understanding not to have a sign, which I think is is a plus. Um, and when the the policing of this, and I'll just make a comment to the to the applicant if this is approved, uh, the the burden does lie on the applicant to follow these restrictions and the policing. There's a significant police force available, and that's your neighbors. And, and if there's any complaint or any breach of any portion of the ordinance, I mean, the, I, I, you can rest assured the town will be notified and, and your hand will be called on it. I'm just past experience shows that, that that's the best policing of the ordinance. So uh, if uh, uh, it appears that everything has been met in my mind and with the understanding of the applicant that, that the onus is on him to follow, continue following the ordinance. I have no opposition uh, with, the, with the restrictions we have discussed to be put in place. I'd agree with Jay that I think not having the signage is, is a plus and from my perspective. Um, I hadn't thought much before this meeting about the transferability of yeah. home businesses, so I I think that uh, something for at least the board probably to be mindful of in the 
in the future as we <laughs> probably see more of these, but I, um, I do want to make note that the applicant has uh, agreed not to transfer the home business as part of the, this process. Um, and, and lastly, um, I think the, the abutter made note that there were, I think, only three or four kids on, on Phillips Road, if I, if I heard him correctly. And, and I know that in my limited time on the board that we have been somewhat sensitive, not somewhat, we've been sensitive to traffic uh, on these roads and kids and school buses and everything else. So um, that, that, that also is a plus for me that there's uh, not a lot of young children, in fact, you know, the abutter who does have, I think, two of them, or 50 percent, it sounds like, um, uh, is in support of the application. So I'm in support of this application as well. Any other comments? Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is take you through the proposed findings that we need to find in order to either approve or disapprove this application. In doing this, my understanding is that the application has been amended to um, make explicit the understanding that the uh, approval, the approved license, so to speak, will not be transferable to a new owner, that no exterior signage will be put on that property to identify it as a massage business, uh, that the hours of operation will be limited from 8 to 6, Monday through Friday, and that the maximum number of clients per day will be limited to five clients or less per day. Do I have that correct? Very much so, yeah. Okay. So with that said, <clears throat> yes, sir. One point of clarification. The 10 vehicle trips, assuming you have one person in each car, gives you five right. clients. But that doesn't mean that somebody would bring their child with them and have a massage for two clients. So. Um, just keep that it's 10 vehicle trips a day. I mean, I'm, I'm saying, well, I, I was, my understanding was the applicant was limiting his customer base to five clients a day. Well, I, I need that clarification, whether it's five clients or five vehicle, uh, 10 My understanding is it's five clients a day, correct? Yeah, well, I, I guess if I had a husband and wife, I could. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's husband's one client, wife's another client, which might be if they both came in the same car, only eight vehicle trips. Well, I think I think when you come to traffic, it, it's all based on the on the vehicle trips, not the number of people in the vehicle. It's going to be be clients. So, I mean, that's the real issue: is is not generate more than ten vehicle trips. Right. So I don't know that you. Well, isn't it, isn't it that if he limits himself to five clients a day, by definition, that means it's 10 vehicle trips or less? Well, item three, which does not address traffic, he indicates uh, one client per one to one and a half hours with a maximum of five clients per day, as stated in, that, in the application. Right. I don't know whether we need to address that or not. That's stated in item three of his application. Well, I think for enforcement purposes, um, I don't know how many, I don't know how I track how many people get in the other car to, to be, be, you know, as a client. So, but, but I could, and the neighbors could see the vehicle trips increase beyond that number, and that's when I would take enforcement action. So, you know, I'm not sure it does any good to talk about clients as opposed vehicle. to vehicle trips. Well, why, it, it says, it, you know, in, in parentheses, it's under the number of vehicle trips per day. One customer visit equals two vehicle trips. So, to me, a customer is a client. I mean, it's, if you got two customers in the, if I'm reading this correctly, if you got two customers in the car, that's four trips. Well, that's that's my wording in parentheses because I never thought about the multiple. Yeah, no. <laughs> It's just, it's just like a, if somebody wanted to have a, a little, where well, they sold knit goods. I mean, mm -hmm. two people could come in the same car. Um, and, you know, that would limit it. If, if, if five people come in one car, then that's it for the day. There would be no more. So right. I have some concerns with that. I mean, that's just. Well, why don't we do it this way? Are you, are you comfortable? 
uh, Bruce, and also the applicant with the wording, the lesser of five clients a day or 10 vehicle trips. I, I, it's still, what, what is your I don't intent, know how I could force. What is your intent, Mr. Chairman? Uh, I'm trying to have some, I'm trying to, I think there's two people we're trying to communicate here. One is the applicant and one is the community. And with regard to the applicant, it's very easy for him to know he stays in compliance if he limits himself to five clients or less a day. Because by definition, it means that even if everybody drives their own car, that's only 10 trips. So as long as he stays under 10 trips a day, he's good. As far as the neighbors go, of course, they can't, they're not going to be able to check to see how many clients come in a car. But as long as, if they start seeing more than 10 trips a day, more than five cars pulling up, pulling away, they know that he's seeing more than five clients a day. Right? Correct. The ordinance simply addresses traffic, and that's our concern. And, and you know, it could very easily be a situation where a lady needs to come in for treatment and her husband needs to drive her. You know, is that, and, and I don't want this to be misconstrued as well, that's two customers. So I would, I would prefer to restrict it to traffic, which is. That's fine. Let's amend it that way. Which is our safety concern, residential that's fine. safety concern. And you understand, you can interpret that uh, easy enough. It's the maximum visits, maximum vehicle trips is 10, which is a tr uh, Pulling into the driveway is one trip, pulling out of the driveway and driving away is another trip. Absolutely. Okay. So it's maximum of 10, 10 vehicle trips uh, a day. Five, which is five unique cars a day, five cars a day. Right. Or five vehicles a day. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, with those limitations in place, we have to make the following findings. First finding is the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. All in favor of that finding? Aye. Unanimously find that first finding. The second finding, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous. Three. The proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous in support. Number four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with a comprehensive plan. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous in support. And the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. All in favor of that finding? Unanimous in support. Um, could I have a motion uh, to approve the uh, application of Jay Stackhouse um, for a conditional use per permit to operate a home business, specifically a ma massage therapy business, in his residence uh, with the limitation that the uh, grant of uh, conditional use will be not transferable Number two, that there will be no signage on the building. Number three, that the hours of op operation will be limited from eight to six Monday through Friday. And that the a number of vehicle trips per day will be limited to 10 vehicle trips. So moved. I hope I don't have to repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> Could I have a second? Second. All in favor? Unanimous pass. Congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I appreciate it. And thanks for all showing Thank up. You. It's nice to see community involvement. Let's see what else, if we have anything else on the agenda. Any communications, Bruce? No, sir. Nothing new going on? You're bringing us some business these days. It's good to see. Yeah, I got to spotten up. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Carmen on board. Thank you for joining us to do these. Anything else? I'd just like to reiterate what was briefly discussed for the members who were not present last time for uh, We requested that every member reply yay or nay 
whether he will be in attendance. I don't think that happened for this evening. Right. I'd like it to happen. I, as acting chairman last time, requested, <laughs> and everybody was in agreement, that that we know who's coming and who is not well in advance. And, and the, the, the addition to that request is simply reply only to the secretary, not reply all, because no need cluttering everybody else's mailbox with it. So reply to sender, uh, yay or nay, whether you will be in attendance is, again, my request. That would be helpful. Anything else, gentlemen? Bring us some business. Thanks, Bruce. Okay. Move to adjourn. <coughs> Meetings adjourned. Thank you.